Uh, first, let's start with the key, uh, opening remarks of Mr. Yu Kong Zhao. Let me br briefly introduce him. Mr. Yu Kong Zhao is the president of uh, AACE. With his leadership, AAC has harnessed overwhelming support from Asian American communities and made significant contributions in the courageous fight against anti-Asian discrimination in education. On account of propelling the recent reform regarding the federal guidance on college admissions and many other endeavors that promote equal education rights for all Americans, which is, uh, which is shared by a lot of uh, Americans of different ethnicities, like Ms. Gwen Samuel from Connecticut, uh, which, who represents the Grassroots Parents Union of Connecticut. Mr. Zhao is also a corporate strategist and Chinese-American author of two books and many columns on prestigious outlets. He is compassionate in sharing proven Asian-American wisdom in education, parenting, personal finance, and family management with struggling American families. Let's welcome Mr. Yu Kong Zhao. Uh, thank you, Swan. Honorable Assistant Secretary Ken Marcos, Honorable Madam Holly Ham, Honorable Speakers, all invited guests, and my uh, fellow uh, colleagues in Asian American Coalition for Education. Good morning. Today uh, is going to be a historic day again. Four years ago, my organization, founder of my organization, came here, filed a complaint against Harvard. We were able, with great support from Asian American communities, we were able to elevate this dialogue from academic debate to a national and international stage. In recent months, I think we really appreciate a lot of media coverage, a lot of national support and national attention. But in recent months, I think what is happening is this dialogue stay in the narrowly focused areas. What's the morality of affirmative action, risk-based affirmative actions, you know, privileged families versus disadvantaged families. But is this topic just about this narrow issue? So here, this is the first national conference on the equal education rights, really we want to challenge our nation, challenge all the policy makers, all the educators, and also all the participants of this dialogue, media, to really think bigger, to look at the issue broadly in a very in-depth way. So with that, I raise about eight questions to really to challenge the assumption, the premises of this dialogue, and also the guiding principles. So by doing this, to open a national dialogue. The first, the Asian, what is America's educational challenge? It's only the racial achievement gap, or also we have quality gap in a global competition, are we ahead of our competitors or are we behind? Second, what are the root cause of lack of racial diversity in higher education? Is that meritocracy or is that failing K-12 education in too many minority communities? Third, who are Asian American children, applicants? Are we the less valuable as Harvard or other Ivy League, League schools rated? Or we are scapegoat for the failing of nations, failing education policy? Next one is risk-based college admission. Um, admission system, not only college, high schools, other areas. It's a sacred call or an effective bandage. When you can move, yeah, I'm sorry. So, and also the purpose of American schools and uh, colleges, are we our schools for education or for social engineering, for racial balancing? And also the role of the federal government, 
Suppose we do the, you know, focus on ratio balancing as the prior administration do, is doing, or the equal, equal protection of the laws, uh, Assistant Secretary Ken Marcus is going to deliver a speech on this. And also, the role of media communicating the facts or pushing for ideological agenda. Finally, what is the best path to develop a racially harmonized, uh, uh, harmonized and effective education policies? Why we should pursue the divisive policy? Should we pursue something that can bring everybody together? Today, all nations face a serious challenging of education. All education is behind. In the last three PISA international evaluations, out of 65 nations, our math only ranked 40. Our science ranked 25. Our reading ranked 24. Are we the, the greatest nation in the world? Not in the education, in other areas, absolutely, but not in the, edu in the area of education. Our homegrown STEM talents cannot meet our rapidly growing high-tech needs. So each year, on H-1B visa, just like when the lottery started, yeah, within days, all the slots have been, you know, been used up. When you, can you push? Yeah. So 50, in, if you look at any American companies, more than 50% of engineers are not homegrown, they're foreign born. Two thirds of like, uh, uh, technicians, uh, engineers in Silicon Valley are foreign born. We have a crisis here, but nobody, uh, you know, we don't have enough attention, you know, media attention on this. William, please. Another challenge, everybody talk about that. The ratio achievement gap. This is a chart by New York City. On the left is Asian, on the, on the bottom the white, both in the math and also in the language. In the middle, black and Hispanic. Their proficiency rate is only half of white and the Asian, right? So we also have a crisis here. So what are the root cause of that? Does the Meritocracy caused a lack of racial diversity in colleges. It, some people even claim standard testing racist. Is that right? What is the real root, root cause of a lack of racial diversity in higher education? Is that a failing K-12 education in too many black and Hispanic communities? What led to that? Yesterday, we talk about the dumbing down of academic standards. Teachers' union, crime, poverty, broken family, or all of the above. I want to mention something about the teachers' union. When China was in the Cultural Revolution, all, all the system, rewarding system, are similar to teachers' union, only based on merit, uh, not merit, only based on seniority. You guess what? China was extremely po poor that time, when I was young, each urban city had only rationed about a two pound meter for whole months. There were, China was as poor as North Korea today. So when teachers' union object, the, gave the performance base to our teachers, can you guess what will lead to our educa public education quality? This chart is a very good example about what's happening as too many minority group, uh, communities. Elementary schools will have good enrollment, significant drop, right? When we go to the middle school, and the middle school go to the high school, after pass like take it SAT, ACT. So it's really a pipeline issue, right? Or some, something else. It's, it, is it like the standard test really the problem for, the, uh, for a lack of uh, diversity? Look at the Asian American uh, students. We have recognized the highest academic performance, highest graduation rate, also 
Christ using the holistic evaluation by Harvard, not only academic, also extracurricular or Christ. One point we talk about, we were behind the STEM education. We have so many outstanding Asian American children meet the all nations needs on this area. You know, in the Olympia, all the Olympia teams are in science, in computers, you know, Asian American children dominate that. And also all the competitions, inter competitions, same science competitions, Asian American children dominate that. So any sensible admission officers should welcome our children. Do you agree? Yeah. Unfortunately, there has been widespread discrimination. This chart is very telling. This, the data line is all population growth in America, pretty much doubled from 1990. That's based on run on the chart. And the, this line is the CATEC. CATEC do not use race as a fact, do not use legacy. See, their admission enrollment of Asian Americans are pretty much in parallel with all po po uh, in all population growth. Look at the, all the Ivy League schools, they're pretty much flat. If, you know, for Harvard, that is like a statistical miracle if they really treat all children fairly. But for all eight, Ivy League schools, all the same. You know, if we learn any math, that's called statistically impossible unless they have hidden racial code. It's common for us. <laughs> and also, higher admission standards. This is really uncovered by Mr. Edward Blum, his team. Look at this. All in every, like, uh, tax school brackets, Asian American enrollment, uh, admission rate always lowest. Other group are much higher. And also, like uh, already have a study says, Asian Americans have to score 140 points higher than white, 270 higher than Hispanic, and 450 higher than black by uh, Professor Thomas uh, uh, Aspen Shade. Also, the racial stereotype, you know, all personal rating are consistently rated the worst among all the racial groups. What caused Asian Americans? Overwhelming workload, stress, mental issues, distrust of American society, a lot of things. So who are Asian American children in this dialogue? Are they really less valuable? You know, look at our records. We have a lot of outstanding entrepreneurship, uh, like technology innovators. Just as I told uh, Ken and uh, Holly last meeting, I was saying, in my humble uh, opinion, any owner of a Chinese restaurant or a motel uh, by Indian American or Pakistan Americans, they all have leadership skills. They all have risk-taking attitude. To say our, you know, our children have low personal rating, it's insult. And also, remember, let's remind us about 130 years ago, during the Chinese exclusion era, we were called Yellow Horde. But uh, other interpretation is, we are really the scapegoat of failing K-12 educations, right? So I'm raising the question for the, this dialogue. And uh, a lot of things, I want to list very important widespread anti-Asian discrimination in many colleges in 42 states nationwide. Second is Mayor de Blasio. You remember the chart? He failed a black student and Hispanic student in New York. K-12, uh, K-8 education is so poor. End of the day, he used Asian Americans, maybe scapegoat for that, right? The racial balancing in Montgomery County and an uh, magnet program, they want to introduce a risk fact, try to manipulate that. Also, just last week or so, in Washington state, they passed the Congress over there, passed the initiative 1000 
And uh, right now, 43 states is going to discriminate Asian American children. What's impact Asian American to become the perpetual second class citizen in America's uh, education system if we do not fight? It will happen like this, perpetual, because you know, root cause, nobody really addressed root cause. So we will become a perpetual second class citizen. So let's look at the risk-based college admission. In our media, many people on the other side, they re regard this as a secret call. You cannot touch, you cannot discuss, you cannot debate. And uh, you know what it really it is? <laughs> Let, let's have a debate. Is that in, ineffective bandage to cover up politicians' failure, like a de Blasio failure? This example, right? This bandage, right? All the poor performance of black and Hispanic in New York City being covered by his reform. And uh, one very important, this is not from a right-wing newspaper. This is from New York Times. Even with affirmative action, black and Hispanic are more underrepresented in t at a top colleges than 35 years ago. So is that effective? So when we talk about the policy, should we just talk about the purpose? Or should also need to evaluate the, its effectiveness? Everybody, I personally experience communism, OK? <laughs> Started with a good cause. What's the results? You know, everybody knew that. Many of my colleagues knew, experienced. So what is American Dream says? You know, people like me, many immigrants come to this country. We admire and cherish the you know, funding principle, rule of law, equal opportunities, among them is the American dream. The Statue of Liberty talk, you know, give us hope. What it says, American dream says, every US citizen should have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. So that is what is about this dialogue. Dr. Martin Luther King says, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the contents of their character. That is all what we're trying to pursue. What is uh, national opinion? Just released by Pew Research Center, 73% of Americans says college and universities should not consider race in college admissions, including 62% black and 65 of Hispanic. Uh, two, years, two years ago, similar results, and also 65% disagree with Supreme Court decision allowed race to be affected. So uh, equal education rights is really an uh, important part of the American dream. So, very big issue here. What are our colleges and schools are for? For education or social engineering? So many times we were misguided, so say, okay, achieve diversity is our primary goal or educate the best workforce for national security, engineer, uh, engineer like uh, technology uh, leadership or economic pr prosperity. Recently, College Board uh, released the so-called uh, adversity school. We will give the like, uh, official like, response in a couple of days. But let me challenge you, uh, like, raise questions for discussion. Is it right for transition from risk factor to social economic factor? Or is intrusive act of social engineering try to normalize every children's future? I want to give you an example. Many parents, not only Asian uh, communities from Asian, many from Hispanic, black community, save money, try to buy a house in a good like, school district. Should they be public, uh, punished by this? Right? I, I'm just raising question here for, for our national dialogue. We, we, absolutely, we support. 
So also, another outrageous example, where uh, uh, Guan we, is going to talk about this, in Redford, Connecticut, should all K-12 education provide a better opportunity to minorities, to black, to Hispanic, or should we prioritize pop, uh, diversity over that? Some people even claim learning and testing math is racist. Our 5G technology is not as good as other nations. You know, we're in, in a global competition. If we drop the mass education, what will happen? We're going to become the you know, third world country rapidly. So the key word here is that once all schools and colleges lose their purpose, American future is endangered or doomed. The role of the federal uh, uh, government is that to promote, uh, promote the racial balancing or provide equal protection law. Facilitate benign racial discrimination or in, enforce the law. And also, number three is something prior administration was doing, not, not current administration, in common core applications Asian, where well, only 6% of the population would be subcategorized as 20, but the white have origin of more than 50 countries across the, the whole globe. Only three categories for them. Why that? As a role of the media, also, should they communicate the facts or promote ideological agenda? Should they be fair, objective, balanced reporting, or unbiased? Should the media be more outraged by the Hollywood admission scandal than this institutionalized discrimination of Asia? We saw a lot of reporting on the Hollywood scandal, but uh, we do see a lot of anti-Asian bias, but not as many of them. Why is that? And also, there was a serious, uh, vicious attack on the leaders, Asian American, uh, 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 like uh, my organization, Asian American Coalition for Education, recently by an uh, ideology-driven comedian. They blame us because we touched the affirmative, risk-based affirmative action. They, they, they even say we are the worst Americans. I want to say, if with this open-minded, fact-driven, uh, fact-based, and a solution-driven attitude, all participants in this national dialogue, from all sides or other side, all of them are among the best Americans. <laughs> Finally, the purpose of today, what is the better path to develop a racially harmonized and effective education solutions, policies. Does America need effective and sustainable solution to address the root cause of education challenging or just a temporary bandage? Should America's education policy be racially harmonized or racially divisive zero-sum game? Should American hold a failing politician like Mayor de Blasio accountable for their failure or to blame uh, meritocracy? Meritocracy. Should our national dialogue focus on large picture of our national, uh, national challenges or just uh, fix on the affirmative action? First, how to address our education quality gap, make America more competitive. Second, how to address the failing K-12 education in too many minority groups. And a third, how to eliminate anti-Asian discrimination. Fourth, how to address corruption in college admissions like legacy systems, like, uh, like uh, you know, <laughs> athlete admissions, The good news is, today we invite a lot of great speakers, have great thinkers, 
community leaders, they all think along this line. They have a broad view of how America should be. They have a great heart, not focused on their own racial group, also focus on how to help America, how to advance American education. And yesterday we had a reception, we had very good dialogue last night. I want to share with everybody here. So here with that, I think that is a great start. So today is the beginning of in, in, international, uh, in very important national dialogue. So uh, with this kind of spirit, with this kind of thinking, I wish we have great successful conference today. Thank you very much.